This, ex this example is going to be similar to our last problem that we did. Um, we're going to take a vector field, which you can see at the top of the screen here, underlined in red. And we're going to look at the work done by that vector field on two different paths from the point 0, 0 to the point 2, 4. 2, 4. The first path here is linear, 2t, 4t, and the time is from 0 to 1 for that. We've been practicing, so you should uh, pause if you need to practice how that happens. The second path will be kind of indicated down here is a parabola from 0, 0 to the point 2, 4. And we can see that second path is a little bit longer than the first path in terms of total distance. But we don't know if the work to get from one to the other is the same or different. So let's calculate the work done by this vector field from 0, 0 to 2, 4 using each of these paths. All right. So there's your vector field. There's your first curve, which is linear. And we want to find the velocity vector first. So what is the velocity vector of r of t here? That's right. It's the vector 2, comma 4. And we set up our integral for work. f dot product velocity vector with respect to t. That's the actual formula I claim. Well, we know the time boundaries are 0 to 1, we can see here. The vector field needs x and y values. Well, here are your x values, and here are your y values that will get substituted into the vector field. So x is 2t times y squared, which is 4t quantity squared, comma, x squared, which is 2t quantity squared, times y, 4t, plus 1, dot product, velocity vector, 2, comma, 4, with respect to t. A little bit messy. Let's see what we can make of it. Zero to 1, 16t squared, that would be 32t cubed. 4t squared times 4t, 16t cubed plus 1, dot product 2, comma 4, with respect to t. We'll do our dot product calculation, 0 to 1. This times this would be 64t cubed plus this times those two terms, which would be another 64t cubed plus 4, all with respect to t. Getting close. All right. Uh, let's combine some terms we'd have here. Integral from 0 to 1, 128t cubed plus 4. And the antiderivative is going to be 32t to the fourth plus 4t evaluated on t is from 0 to 1. This will give us 32 plus 4, which is 36. And again, if this is a physics problem, the units of measurement might well be in joules. Now let's go and investigate what happens at the second path. All right, so I've got some things already set up here. We need a velocity vector. Velocity vector. First root is going to be 1 comma 2t. And work will be equal to force dot product velocity vector with respect to t. And let's see with all this information we have here what I can find. The time intervals from 0 to 2, 
zero to two. And this is our X and our Y value to be substituted up here. So wherever it says X, we plug in T. Wherever it says Y, we plug in T squared. Dot product, one comma two T with respect to T. All right, messy, but we have a starting point now. Zero to two, let's do a little clean up here. That's gonna be T to the fifth power. All right, that's part of it. And then this is gonna be here, T to the fourth power plus one dot product one comma two t with respect to t. Zero to two, that's gonna be t to the fifth. And this times this is gonna be two t to the fifth plus two t. I see some like terms, so let's just go ahead and capitalize on that. 3t to the fifth plus 2t. And the antiderivative is 3t to the sixth over six plus t squared from zero to two. Um, 3 over 6 reduces to 1 half, so we get 1 half t to the 6 plus t squared from 0 to 2. Uh, 2 to the 6 power is 64, half of that's 32. t squared, 2 squared is 4. When you substitute 0, you get 0. It's really messy, 0 is there. But this adds up, my students, to 36. And I think you'll find 36 is what we had before. So, some questions that might come to mind. Work this time was the same. Was that a coincidence? Was there a purpose behind it? Maybe it wasn't a coincidence. And the answer to that question will be in what comes next. See you later.